Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the video on basically learning async queue with Python, right? So let's get started. So we have been doing a lot of async tutorials uh, these days. I've done on threading, I've done on multiprocessing, you know, threading as a decorator and stuff like that. Let's learn about coroutines in Python. Uh, one disclaimer, if you're watching this video, make sure you have Python 3.8 um, because the syntax that I'm about to use is only gonna work on Python 3.7 and above. If you have lower version, you have to use event loop and stuff like that. Just a disclaimer, okay? So make sure you have Python 3.8. All right, so let's define a couple of imports, man. So I'm gonna say import OS, import sys, import async queue, except except exceptions as e some modules are okay perfect Perfect, that's done and um, yeah. So let us um, define our very first async queue function. So it's pretty easy. You can just say async queue, async. Okay, and okay, pretty good, right? Now let's run that. It's not gonna work because um, so I just printed my Python version. Now, in order to run any uh, function which starts with async, right, you need to write, it's basically a coroutine. For example, if what I mean is, so like if I wanted to show you, if I just say some work right here, let's see what do we get. So we got some something like a coroutine object, like what the hell is that? So this is not how you run. In order to run this function, you have to define an event loop. So I'm using 3.8 in the newer version. You can just do it by using, you can say async here async dot run and then you gotta pass the function that you wanna run. So in my case, I just have some work and I'm gonna run, run that function. Hello world, yep, that works fine. So if you are not using Python 3.8, then you have to do something like event loop and all that. I'm not gonna cover that because as I said, this video is on Python 3.8 and stuff, okay? So this is how you write a very basic uh, async function and basically you know, you can run the function using asyncure.run. Now let's step it up, guys. So I'm gonna write a couple of more functions. So let us define, let us show you the true power of asyncure or coroutines. So, so I'm gonna say async, I'm gonna say def, I'm gonna say compute, and uh, this is gonna be compute square. Gonna take a number. Um, basically, we say, OMPU computing square okay then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purposely add some delay here okay so in order to do that I have to use an await command and I'm gonna say async and I'm gonna use sleep method right there let's add a three second delay and after that I'm gonna say uh, the square Okay, so yeah, that's a pretty simple function. Um, I'm gonna define one more function. So it should be basically a cube of that number. All right, and what am I missing here? Oops. Making sure it looks beautiful to space. We're gonna use pepate. 
All right, looks good, man. So now in order to run this two task, um, of course, you know how you can run it, right? So you would say async queue, async queue run, and you would basically pass some function. Let's say 33, sure enough. So here you can see computing that, but I wanna run both of them at the same time, or I would say concurrently in technical terms. All right, then you have to define an async function again. So, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to basically create some task here. So, all right, so let's do it, man. So first of all, you need to create a task. So what I'm going to do is basically, ah, the indentation won't match because, yeah, let's do it here. So I'm going to say task one is equal to, I'm going to say async here. And I'm gonna basically create a task, so create a task. And basically I'm gonna say Koro, and I'm gonna pass the function like, I don't know, what was that, compute square? Compute the square of 33. That's my first task, by the way. Okay, so now my second task would be, I wanna compute async dot create task. I'm gonna say Koro. And I'm gonna say compute cube, compute cube of 33 as well. Done, pretty good. Now we need to run that, right? So we wanna wait till the function is complete. So I'm gonna say this. Perfect, lovely, lovely, lovely guys. So easy, piece of cake so far. All right, no worries. So now we wanna run this function. So we're gonna say instead of compute, we're gonna say main, which is gonna run both of core routines. So now let's see, ideally if I had to run this function, so it would take six seconds because it would run this function once and then it would run this function first. So technically it takes six seconds, but when you're using core routines, so whenever this function is sleeping, it's gonna execute this function and, and vice versa. So it's gonna do time switching or slicing, whatever you wanna call in technical terms. So here you can see computing square, computing cube, both at the same time, square of number is this and this. Now, what is interesting here is I wanna teach you a lot of stuff here. So I wanna teach you how to get the values of from this async your function, very interesting. It's pretty interesting. Um, if you wanna basically set, a, set, set, if you wanna say something like, you know, this function should only wait for like few seconds. If the value is, you don't get the value, hey, just, just get out. Like, you know, like some kind of a timeout. Well, async your um, uh, has that and um, you can um, of course say, async queue, right? You say async queue, and you can say wait for. Wait for, and then you would say the task. You would supply the task, and you can say timeout is equal to, let's say, um, five seconds. Now, if I run the same program, computing fifth square, it's gonna wait for that time. If it did not find that if the core routine did not run in that time, it's gonna give error. Remember, the delay was for three seconds, and now I'm giving just one, one second, so it's gonna, it's gonna break it's gonna give you an exception. And I wanna show you that exception. So async your exception timeout. So we should handle these exceptions. So you can say in the code, try. Damn it. Except exceptions, um, except uh, timeout. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm just gonna just try to generalize stuff. So if this fails for some reason, if it does not execute in one second, um, you know, uh, it'll take care of that. So that is one thing. Now, how to get values from this function? Uh, so let's say you wanna return some kind of values here. So return that one, return num. Okay, cool. Get rid of that one. Or actually, you know what, let me just keep it comment it out so you guys can play with it all right good 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 um so now we want to get values from these functions so the way we can do that is basically um let me show you actually so it's pretty easy in async queue um you can say let's say response so simple use the command await and give it the task that you want to wait for and Done, that's all. Check it out. 
Cool, right? Um, you got the value. Perfect. Uh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, what else I wanted to teach you? Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, your async here, man. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also do one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, instead of returning stuff, you can use queues or priority queues to do that. So you can say from queue, import queue. So I can say square equals to, um, you know, I'm going to create a queue. And instead of this return, I'm going to say square dot uh, put, what was that, put item or get item or push item, whatever. <laughs> Thumbs, thumbs. So yeah, you can um, also, uh, if you don't want to return this, you can also try some of this logic, basically create a queue and basically put the item in the queue. Now what you can do is uh, when you call this, we'll write a simple logic here. So I can say while true, and I can just say flag is equal to square dot empty. And basically I can write a logic if flag, then pass. Else I can say, um, you know, get the value from the queue. So response is equal to uh, the name of the queue, print response, break. Yeah, that's all, man. Easy. So, yeah, we are using queues now. So let's run that and hopefully it should work. So computing the square. And yeah, sure enough, this logic also works. So if you don't want to, if you want to get values, there are two ways to, you can get values from the async queue. Either use this await task and then you can print that. Um, of course, I showed you that. Or you can use a queue logic. You can put the item into the queue and then retrieve the item from the queue back. Simple, right? So hope you have enjoyed it. And if so, do give a like. And if you have any more questions, kindly put them in the comment section below. And I would be very happy to assist you. Once again, thank you for watching. Keep smiling, keep coding and see you guys next time.